How's it going? This is James from James Films, and today I want to talk about how I set up a scene for animation with rain effects, and some of the things I keep in mind in terms of lighting, texturing, and just overall scene design to really set this one up well for that beautiful rain animation that you are seeing right now. To do the actual rain, I used a really cool new Geometry Nodes add-on from Antoine Bagatini, or Bagapai. Let's put this really cool one together that allows you to really control a lot of different parameters with the rain, including splash height, splash particle size, as well as the speed of the rain, the kind of area that it's covering, and also most importantly, how it interacts with surfaces. So you're actually able to set effectively like these colliders using collections that the rain will intersect with and actually interact with. There's a couple limitations here. You can't really have too intense geometry. So what I've noticed is I've had to decimate a couple things just to make sure that they're a little bit lower poly for the solver to kind of figure out where they are and not kind of overload the system and kind of shut things down. So um, for this one, I actually, for the collider, just use this super simple building where I just cut out a hole here. It's pretty low poly, as you can see. Um, the highest density is at this edge here where I have some really intense splashing going on. So I wanna make sure that was really nice detail. And then on the bottom surface of this plane is where the most splashing is taking place. But there are quite a few other things that I kept in mind as I was setting up the scene that I wanted to walk you through and kind of give you some ideas for your own compositions to really make sure that you're strengthening your details and really making your scenes look realistic. So first of all, the most important thing, and I talk about this quite a lot in a lot of my tutorials, is the lighting. So for starters, I use an HDRI for this one. This is one I got from the uh, HDRI Haven. It's a really cool little overcast sky. If I kind of zoom out here, you can see it. I've really darkened it up quite a bit here just because I wanted to go for that super rainy, foggy day kind of feel. So the strength is very low on this one. And I just kind of rotated it around so that the buildings weren't gonna be showing if I looked up. I wanted to use this also as like the sky box for my scene too, um, because I knew I was gonna be animating the camera looking up. And a simple image as a plane wouldn't cut it because the parallax would kind of be messed up as the camera got a little bit closer. So. If I go out here and just show you this camera motion first too, it's kind of zooming into the frame and then ending with this really cool look up to the sky where you're gonna see the rain kind of coming down directly overhead as if you're kind of looking up into like the column of rain coming down at you. So that was the effect I was going for. I wanted to make sure that the sky worked for that one too. So I used an HDRI for that. As the sky box works nice and well. But you can see the scene is still pretty dark and you're not really directed anywhere if you're looking at this. You know, as your eye is looking into the frame, there is maybe a little bit of brightness here and kind of this bright curvature of this archway here that you're kind of looking to, but overall it's pretty dark. So what I did is added in some lamps here and I've got these kind of sphere glowing orbs that I really like to use. Actually, I've got a lamp just like this in my apartment that I really love too. It's a nice kind of cozy, warm lamp. Just gives a nice little cast of light too. And there's also some hidden lights here as well that are point lights that are helping glow up the scene here. This is actually one that I've made um, invisible to my camera here. So you can see I've turned off ray visibility, so it's not showing up in the camera. If I was to turn this back on, you see this little sphere here in the scene. But I'm turning off its visibility so the camera doesn't see it. And it's there just to throw a little bit of extra light on the scene. If I was to go and disable this, you can see it, it just adds a little bit of extra brightness to that little area of the scene. I similarly have one over here too, brightening up this little portion because I noticed that this corner was getting a little bit dark too. It's super subtle, again, just a little bit of brightness here and it's also kind of a darker, almost like kind of orangish yellow, mustard yellow that I've added for this. But it just really has a nice splash to the scene. I've also put a big one up here. This is uh, kind of my overall uh, brightness if I go up to here and turn this off. This is kind of adding that kind of white ring around here, so really enhancing the HDRI, kind of the overcast sky. So I just really am purposeful about my placement of these lights to really draw your eye into the frame. I'm also changing up the scaling of the lights too, so all these orbs are kind of like different sizes, so that it feels a little bit more realistic, like you've kind of got variation to the scene, variation to the lamps, variation to the placement of this, so it looks more natural, kind of integrated with the landscape. You know, these are kind of like resting on the moss, they're also adding some interesting kind of glow to the edges of my plants and rocks too, to really draw out those details and have your eyes kind of exploring through the scene. You know, I really want you to take in all the details of the scene as you're looking through. So that's the basic lighting setup here for that part. I'll get to this lighting setup up here in a second, but I've got this huge area light up here um, with quite a bit of power and kind of a bluish hue to it. 
Um, this is actually going to be uh, illuminating a lot of the rain too, because what I noticed was a lot of the rain was kind of getting lost in the dark background of the sky. So I wanted to kind of draw it out a little bit more and really heighten that kind of um, you know transparency, translucency of the droplets and really make that pop a bit more. So that light is kind of serving that purpose. And I'll talk a bit more about that as I get into the rain uh, simulation. But one more thing that's really heightening this overall feel of the scene is the textures that I've used here too. So there's a lot of very dark natural textures that kind of fade away a little bit. So your eye's not really necessarily drawn into these darker corners. It's kind of like a natural vignette that I've set up here for my scene. I do have a couple kind of brighter rocks and brighter leaves and foliage. And eventually if I bring in my other um, plants, I got a lot of vegetation here that I can enable. There's some kind of bright flowers and stuff that I've used too that kind of enhance the brightness of the scene. Um, so that you can see here, I bring these flowers and stuff in here too. So those bright leaves and bright flowers are kind of drawing your eye in a little bit better there. But there's some pretty dark regions and this floor initially was pretty dark when I kind of brought it in too. So what I actually did is I have this marble square texture that I'm using for my scene. And I followed, uh, there's a really great uh, technique to add in um, procedural puddles using a noise texture. Blender Guru talks quite a bit about this in an older tutorial of his. Um, but this is a really fun technique where you're using a, a glossy BSDF in a mix shader with uh, some controls from a noise texture. So if I was to just show what this noise texture looks like here, you can see it's a pretty subtle texture and I've kind of ramped it up with this color ramp to kind of draw out those puddles, uh, up the detail of this a little bit so that you can kind of see these edges a little bit more and then controlled it with the color ramp um, mixed in with my original texture for that. Uh, and then just mixed it in with a nice glossy BSDF node uh, to get to that final result of having these really nice puddles that just kind of catch the light a little bit more. And you can have some kind of breakup of this texture too. So it looks like it's been raining for a while. The scene just has this kind of wet, cozy, rainy day feel to it. Um, and you can see kind of how the puddles have formed here. There's some kind of parts of the texture that are a little bit drier there. And you kind of have the, the wetter puddled regions, which looks really nice. And if, let me just turn that off for a second here too. So if I um, pull this back and then I just want to also just highlight uh, just this guy here. Uh, so this is what the texture originally looked like pretty much too. Um, it was, uh, is that right? Yeah, there we go. So this is how it looked like initially. So it's already pretty reflective as a texture. Um, it's got quite a lot of glossiness to it to begin with but it looks kind of just uniform and, and it'll look really weird with the rain coming down if it just looks dry like this. You know, if it's landing on here and it just, it doesn't work photorealistically. If you look at some reference photos too of what rain looks like and what puddles look like outside, this just wasn't it. <laughs> this wasn't the, the look I was going for. So I had to add in this kind of extra bit of puddleness to it to really heighten that effect and really make the rain pop as it's coming in. So let's actually talk about the rain itself too here. So this is a really fun, um, it comes basically as like an asset library. So if I go over to my asset browser here, um, it's this rain generator that I've just located the blend file that has all of these uh, rain generator things in it. And it's as simple as literally dragging and dropping these into your scene. Uh, so if I was to just drag in like one of these here, it just brings this into your scene and it actually gives you a lot of parameters that you can control. I'm just gonna to go to my original one that I've brought in here. So I've got this rain generator 10 meter resolution one. And if I go over to the uh, modifier properties, you can see you've got a whole bunch of different uh, settings that you can adjust. And a lot of these really have pretty dramatic effects on the ultimate result of your uh, rain coming down here. I've hid this from the viewport from now. So let me just kind of enable this back up. It might take a second because I've made this very dense. Um, but you can see the droplets coming in and this is actually fully animated too. So I actually animated some camera movement, like I said, and you know, you can really see the splash is showing up very well on the surface here too. And because I have that kind of rainy texture, it looks even better when the splash has kind of hit like a darker kind of puddle region. Cause it really, you know, shows the effect of this kind of splashing in those puddles. It looks awesome. One more thing I set up here too, if the first parameter that you see below the droplet being selected, I'd just leave that as default. The droplet is just like a nice little droplet that the uh, bag of pie creators kind of put in here. But the one that you can start to control here is this rain target. You notice I'm using this collection called block. So if I go down to what is block? Well, right now I've only got one object in it and it's this overall uh, scene here. So this is just kind of my general architecture that I've added as a blocker for the rain to interact with. So as it's coming down, it's actually, if I zoom in here, that's a little bit overloaded here. If I click off this, 
you can actually see it's hitting this surface, this outer edge. So there's some rain that is actually not getting to the bottom of this because it's just intersecting with this. And it gave this really cool effect, especially on this kind of edge of the, the rim here, where you can see there's some splashes and kind of rain bouncing off it. It just looks really natural and looks really cool having that little extra detail. Like I said, this effect kind of breaks down a little bit if you've got kind of a very dense uh, object that you're using. So I tried it a bit with these trees and for now I've not found a good fix for something this high poly uh, to interact with. If you put this tree in as a parameter, the solver kind of breaks down a bit and it's hard for it to kind of bounce off effectively with that. There are a couple demo files uh, from this add-on that show some little bit more complex scenes. There's one that's like a cannon that's got some kind of um, complex geometry and some of the kind of connecting pieces and, and, and metal rods and things like that where it's intersecting pretty well, but this has just so much different topology to it with all these different branches and leaves and stuff that it, it really is hard for the solver to figure out where it's intersecting with the surface and it ultimately ends up not looking that well. So the fix for this would actually probably be to animate these trees uh, just using you know, some simple displacement, maybe to kind of fake a little bit of movement. So what I would probably do is select the leaves in here uh, and do a little bit of weight painting. So you can actually uh, affect just the movement of those little leaves. And then you can feed in a uh, displacement modifier that is actually just affecting these leaves and kind of make it look, have a little bit of ripple, like a little bit of noise to it if you kind of animate the noise affecting it. But that's for another video, I'll probably go into a bit more detail about how to animate some of these plants and things like that and drive that procedurally. Um, so yeah, so I had this rain interacting with this surface. And if I click back on this rain, the other parameters I really focused on quite a bit were the rain quantity, density, and speed. And if I kind of hover over these, you can see uh, the density of rain falling, this value is influenced by the speed. So the speed is kind of like this central core feature adjusting this. You can see it must be adapted according to rain quantity and density. So it's kind of a push-pull effect. And it was a little bit hard to preview this because as I'm starting to, to render this out, um, it's quite slow in the viewport. So if I play through this, you can see I'm getting uh, up the top here like pretty slow frame rate as this is going down. It's at like, I think eight frames per second now going down to five, three, 0.6 frames per second, 0.7. So yeah, when I was doing playback, it was hovering just below like one frame per second, which if you're previewing for an animation, it's very hard to you know get an idea for what you're looking at. So as I was working through this, I actually rendered out a lot of test frames and I encourage you to do the same thing as well too, but you don't need to render them at full resolution. You know, one thing you can do is really turn down the sample count so you can even run like a sample of like five samples. It's gonna be super noisy, but it will give you a clear idea for the speed of the rain coming down, how it's interacting with your surface. You can even box select too. So sometimes what I'll do when I'm rendering is just hit control B. And you can just like select one region. So this is a region here where there's gonna be a lot of rain intersecting. And I'm most interested in that like one portion. So I could just render that and then only render that render region out when I'm actually rendering out like the preview. Uh, again, turning down the, the noise, yes. Yeah, so see, I'm only previewing this one little area here. Um, so I can just render out just this little area, really turn down the noise uh, there. And also, if you go to the output properties, um, I'm rendering this for Instagram for like kind of a vertical resolution for Instagram Reels of 1200 by 1500. But you can also just, without having to change all these other parameters, you can also just turn down the resolution. So you can just turn this down to like, you know, 10%, something super, super small, you know, like a little thumbnail size thing almost. But this will just render so much quicker. Each frame will render you know, in seconds versus in minutes or hours, depending on how dense your scene is. And it's just a very quick way to preview before you spend so much time rendering stuff out just to figure out that your rain is moving in slow motion, right? So you don't want that to happen. So I encourage you to be kind of checking stuff like that throughout the process as you're making these adjustments. You know, at least for now, especially with the very dense rain, you know, it's, it's hard to get, kind of get a preview. And what I would suggest for a lot of other add-ons and stuff is, hey, just turn the density down a bit and kind of preview it there. But changing this density really just changes the overall uh, solver here too. So it would really kind of mess up how the overall speed of stuff is looking and you wouldn't get really an accurate look at how this is actually interacting with your surface with it. So it's, it's harder to use kind of like proxies for this. Um, you can actually change a couple other things to speed up your viewport a bit too, including the um, size if I kind of pull this over a bit more, oops. The size of the splashes, the size of the rain too. So if you go over here, you have um, splash radius and render, splash radius and viewport. Um, so this will just kind of change if you turn this down really small. Like, so I've got the splashes pretty small. They're a lot more detailed, but if I was to turn this up a bit, um, let me just put this up to like something kind of obscenely large. Um, so you can really see. So if I turn this up a lot, you've got these like huge particles here of rain. Um, but it, it will run a bit quicker if you've got kind of like larger proxies as opposed to like really small scale things. 
Um, so I just had that down at the same one just to kind of preview what it actually looked like. Um, you can also adjust, I didn't do this for this one because I wanted it coming straight down vertically, but you can adjust the wind strength and orientation. So you can kind of like have this a bit tilted as it's coming in too, as it's hitting your surface. For this one, for that final shot, I wanted it looking up, you know, through the rain, kind of coming down vertically through the scene. Um, so if I go to like one of the last frames here, I wanted you looking up through this kind of column of rain. And if I added a bit of an angle to it, it would look kind of unnatural. So I wanted to have um, it just kind of coming perfectly straight up and down. But you can adjust that wind strength and wind speed, which is pretty cool too. You can also mess with the actual rain particle size and like kind of how it's looking as well, uh, which is pretty cool. So just a lot of really fun stuff to play around with there. And so I encourage you to, if you have this add-on, just really enjoy messing around with that. I'm still kind of getting used to it. This is kind of like the first test scene that I wanted to try out with it. And it gave me a chance to really experiment a lot with the lighting and composition for this too. And just setting things up, kind of problem solving a bit with the intersections. I still, there's some stuff I want to work with a bit because you can notice there's still some particles kind of leaking through here. I can kind of attribute this to, hey, maybe it's a leaky roof. You know, it's an older meditation area that is just kind of leaking through. So that's just where that's coming from. I also kind of like the look of the splashes here too. You couldn't necessarily tell because of how I framed this that this is actually like a roof is here too. So it kind of just all looks open. So I'm still trying to problem solve some of those things there, but in general, it's been working really well for this test scene here and just really love the look of it. So I'm gonna to try to keep exploring with this a bit more, um, but just kind of wanted to walk through setting up that animation and some of the scene composition for you. So yeah, that's how I put that together. And then for the animation, it was super simple camera move that I just had kind of coming into the frame and then just dollying in and then just kind of panning up upwards to look up into the sky. So a lot of fun to put this together uh, and thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.